Hey there, welcome to netgamedev.com, the largest collection of Unity multiplayer sample games, tutorials and resources. In this video, we'll be taking a look at how to set up multiple players over the network and get the FPS controllers working properly so you can have multiple players in your games doing whatever these guys are. Um, guys, try not to bump into each other too much as I record this video. Yeah, thank, thank you very much. Thank you. So yeah, by the end of this video, you will have multiple players in the same game session sort of doing whatever these guys are um, doing. To follow along with this video though, you will need a properly working FPS controller that can do whatever FPS controllers are meant to do. Yes, jumping off a box. And uh, yeah, you probably already have that if you're following along with this for your own game. But if you do not, go ahead and check out the link I've left for you in the description where you can download my FPS controller and import it into your project so you can use it to follow along. Don't scroll too fast though because the very first link in the description allows you to join my Discord channel where you'll find a lot of helpful multiplayer resources in there. So now that we have an actual FPS controller in our game, let's get started. Alright, so I've got my network manager selected. And there's a few unhelpful tutorials out there that suggest that you literally grab your FPS controller and put it straight into the player prefab slot right here. Bad idea. Because this actually gives you a lot less control than you need while creating multiplayer games. Instead, the network player is just an empty prefab, empty game object, nothing in here except for just components. And the FPS controller is part of what's called the player presentation. So in the player prefab section here, you put the empty network game object, the network player, and under network prefabs, you also put the network player and you add the FPS controller as a network prefab as well. Just as a heads up, if you are creating this using your own FPS controller, you need to make sure that your FPS controller has the network object component attached. And oh, there's another component right here. This is the client network transform. There's the normal network transform, but this is the client network transform. Just to make sure you have this, make sure you head over to Windows, select the package manager, and under your net code for game objects package, make sure you have the samples section expanded, and make sure you have the client network transform imported. Very, very important. Then you'll have this, and to whatever FPS controller you're using, just make sure that this is added as a component. Now from there on, everything else is quite basic. In your FPS controller or whatever controller you're using, you just want to make sure you have things that are usually used to control the player all disabled. So for me, I'm disabling the character controller, the first person controller, and if you have any rigid body or anything else here, just make sure it's also disabled. We'll enable this, but we'll only do it for the local player not the remote player. Also, in the client network transform, make sure that you've disabled this final option here that says can commit to transform. Now, on the network player prefab, which is the actual prefab that's assigned here in the network manager, which means every single time a client joins, he's gonna get a local version of this spawned for himself and over the network. So, on this network player, we want to make sure we assign a script that will actually spawn in the network player. So, this is this network player script here. Let's take a look at how it looks in code. So once the network player is spawned here on the on network spawn function, we go ahead to check if this is in fact the server. If it is the server, we call this spawn player function. The spawn player function simply looks for possible spawn points for the player, picks any random spawn point and spawns the object that is assigned as the player prefab. In Unity, this player prefab is the FPS controller. Now we spawn him here with ownership to mean that he is owned by this client ID. And that is what allows our FPS controller here under the client network transform component here. That's what allows it to actually be able to submit its position to the server. The only final thing we need to look at here is the player presentation script, which is uh, created and assigned to the FPS controller. So this player presentation script is actually created to set up the player presentation. Uh, depending on whether he is a local player or remote player, you might want him to look different. But most importantly, you only want the local player to be able to try and control the uh, player presentation. So in here, under the on change owner, so this is when the owner of the object is changed, we check to see if we are in fact the owner. So if the value is true that we are the owner, we go ahead and get the camera, we get the audio listener, FPS controller, which is the one used to control the player, the character controller, and the client network transform, and we set all of them to enable. For the client network transform, we actually set this can commit transform variable to true here, which is what allows it to send its position to the server. Now we check for any object that is in that is within this remote only 
uh, list that we have here and set it to false. This remote only list here includes all objects that we only want to be present on remote clients, such as the nose of the player in this case, which is just there to indicate where remote clients are looking. Now, one of the major problems that I've realized with this uh, netcode for game objects is that its ownership system is a little bit weird. I wasn't able to get the typical on change ownership function to work, so I went ahead and made my own. This is just a private uh, access a boolean that returns the internal previous is on off, the internal is on a variable here. But when it is set, it just checks to make sure that the new value is not the previous value. And if it's not the previous value, it calls this onChanged owner function. You might need to do something of this sort if the typical onChanged ownership functions do not work. And you might not believe it, but this is really all you need to do in order to set up this kind of ownership with players. Let's go ahead and run a few Unity instances to see this in action. And yeah, back in Unity, we see that uh, all network objects can get spawned and the player controllers are perfectly working and uh, running around the scene and doing pointless things like I like them to. Alright, well, if you like my videos and you learned something from this content, it would mean the world to me if you went ahead and hit the subscribe button and join my Discord as well while you're at it. I'll catch you in the next video. Peace out, guys.